Hi, everybody. Welcome to Grace with Paul Gray. I want to talk a little bit today about what do we do when it seems like some of Jesus' own teaching seems to contradict God being love. Like the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, the guy who died and was in a fiery place and they were separated by a great chasm, or the parable of the sheep and the goats being separated. Things that don't appear uh, to go along with God being love, totally loving everyone and Jesus including everyone in his finished work at the cross. What do we do when we come to those passages? Well, with just a casual reading, not considering that it's a parable meant to illustrate a greater truth, not looking into the culture at the time and the meaning of the original words, and considering what we may have been taught by religious people in the past, those things can seem to contradict the fact that God is love. So what do we do? How do we answer those questions for ourselves and for other people that <clears throat> want to know, well, how does that work? Here's just what works for me. If something in Scripture <clears throat> seems to contradict God being love, I just ask the Holy Spirit. And if I don't get an answer, I've learned to set that aside and be confident that if I need to know what it means, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to me at the right time. Then I don't worry about it. I no longer think that I have to have all the answers, especially about Scripture. I don't no longer think I have to make it conform to my own beliefs or explain it to others. I'm getting more comfortable just saying, you know, God hasn't yet revealed to me what that really means. And I've learned that when it's important to Him, He will. But right now, I'm resting in the knowledge that God is good. He is for us all. Jesus has included us all in his finished work at the cross, and he won't do anything to contradict his grace and unconditional love for everyone. You know, we can only grasp <laughs> so much at a time. We have to, when, when we look at something and we go, oh, well, what about that? Then we've, we've got to hear from God, meditate, see how a particular passage fits in, put, then put what we're thinking into practice before we can go on to something different. And there's a whole myriad of things out there. So if a particular passage, something like this, if God lays it on your heart to learn more about it, well, you can do the research yourself. And that means different things to different people. For me, doesn't mean this will be true for you, but for me, I like to read what other people have written. And there are a number of good books on these subjects and another, a number of people who post on Facebook and other places who address these hard-to-understand things. Many of them are gifted scholars who really know Greek and Hebrew and have studied the culture of the times and all of that kind of stuff. They've already done the heavy work for me. I'm not called <clears throat> to do that, but I'm glad that they are. I have a folder on my computer titled Explaining Hard-to-Understand Scripture. And so when I come across something that talks about a passage like I mentioned earlier, I'll read these different posts and I'll file some of them there. Of course, I don't always agree with everything that I read because some of them are contradictory. But then the main thing is, is I hold all of these things loosely and I don't come to a conclusion until the Holy Spirit of Christ reveals in me what she wants me to know. I keep Jesus and his grace, his unconditional love and perpetual motion, working all things for the good, for the restoration of all. I keep Jesus as my rock-solid foundation. Then my theology, how I understand different things from the scripture, is fluid. Now that's different. I, I used to think I got to have everything nailed down and I got to be perfectly in line with this group that I'm hanging with or something like that. No more. I just keep, I keep it fluid. And I let the Holy Spirit in me reveal every day what she wants me to. And I know, I do know this, every day I'm going to find out that God is better than I thought the day before. Bottom line is, we don't have to understand everything. We don't have to have an answer for everything. We don't have to make everything in Scripture fit into a tidy book of systematic theology. When we keep Jesus and His grace, His unconditional love for everyone as our rock-solid foundation. And then we go to the teacher, Christ in us, for wisdom and understanding, and trust that Christ will reveal what he wants, when he wants, then we can let it go. And we don't need to worry. 
We can literally trust God with everything, even hard to understand scripture, and we can just live in his grace and love and joy and celebrate Jesus every day. Hope that's helpful. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.